Hello YouTube! Alright, so today, um, the last couple of videos you've seen with the gauntlets, I had a gray base coat put on them. After I put the gray base coat on them, I went ahead and put a base coat of silver, and then I did the, the green, um, masking off the silver battle damage, and then I went ahead and finished them up with a lot of the black details, and specifically the white details, on the whipcord housing on the right gauntlet. Uh, in this video, you'll see me get very close to completing the main body of both of the gauntlets. Uh, so, again, from last video, remember they were a gray, well, actually, update number 28. They were a gray color. Um, well, after that, I went ahead and put a silver base coat and then a green base coat over the top and then did all my black accent marks. Um, as you can see, I also finished adding several other things, including uh, the um, gauntlet darts, which are made out of wood. Um, added back in my toggle switches, which now have a working light, and added on my hose, which I'm going to have to trim to length once I put on my suit and sort of figure out exactly how long it needs to be. Um, so in this video, you will see me finish them up to this point. Uh, I hope you enjoy. So in the last video, uh, as we talked about earlier, I had the base color of gray, and after that I went ahead and used the tester's metallic and sprayed that on the gauntlets. I do not actually cover the whole entire gauntlet, I actually saved some paint by not painting the bottom of the gauntlets um, because I didn't really feel like I was going to be weathering the bottom sides of them very much back to that silver color. One thing to note, whenever you mix up your paint, make for sure to do a good job of um, sealing it off afterwards so that way you can save it for later. After I let the silver dry, I go ahead and start masking off the battle damage. The battle damage is created by using a liquid mask and applying it where I want the silver to show through the green paint. The beautiful thing about this is you can always add more if you want to by just using a little steel wool and roughing up your parts. Once the battle damage is added, it's time to start mixing paint. Uh, for this I use Humbral Green 78. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is usually considered to be Humbral Green 76. I thought I had grabbed my 76 pail, but I ended up grabbing the 78. I used it instead. I still like the way it looks. Again, I'm not going for 100% screen accurate, I'm going for uh, easily recognizable. I think it turned out well. Uh, one thing to note, the Humbral Green 78 is very thick, which means that you can thin it down a whole bunch. Uh, please don't make a mess on your wife's countertop. Once completed with the mixing of paint, go ahead and lay it down. I did two coats at least on each gauntlet. I left certain parts unpainted mainly because I wasn't going to have a base coat of green on the whip cords. Uh, once you paint all your pieces, make sure to clean your parts and set them aside to let them dry. Now the detail work begins. I started by trying to dry apply black paint to the whip cord housing and didn't like the way that it was going on, so I went ahead and masked off everything so I could shoot it through an airbrush. You add extra paper and things like that just to keep the overspray down to a minimum, though it's not required, I guess, if you're better than me. Uh, as you see, I go ahead and uh, set up my airbrush station and put a coat of silver on the gauntlet darts, and then mixed up my black paint and shot it onto the uh, various portions of the gauntlet, such as the whipcord housing, the buttons, and etc. that needed the black paint. Uh, one point of note, I wasn't thinking whenever I mixed up my black paint and it was actually a gloss. So afterwards I hit it with a bit of steel wool to make it more of a matte finish. After that I laid down a coat of white paint. The white paint was too thin so I ended up actually having to let it sit, let thinner evaporate out of it and then hit the gauntlets again to finish them off. I think they turned out really well. Continuing on with the finishing touches, I go ahead and add the right gauntlet hose as well as the right gauntlet darts. This was one of those times where you make your mark and you have to move because you're cutting holes in your gauntlet. I attached the rear hose with a whole bunch of hot glue and I attached the gauntlet darts the same way with a little bit of hot glue. And that finishes off these. 
Uh, all you have to do is weather them up a little bit with the steel wool and call them done. The final piece is to actually put all of the parts back together. So I re-ran my toggle switches, I put back in my battery, and I cleaned up the gauntlets just a little bit more. Now there's still a few more things to be done here, such as the side pieces on the whipcord needs two more little greeblies, and I need to make a whole bunch of studs, such as the flamethrower and the left gauntlet dart, or sorry, left gauntlet rocket for the left gauntlet. So there's still work to be done here, but I'm very satisfied with how specifically the right gauntlet looks right now. It's, it's, it's almost complete. If you like what you see on my channel, I would appreciate your subscription. And thank you for your time. I hope that I've helped you today. And if you have any questions, just leave them below in the comments. And I've made it easy for you and put a button right there in the bottom right hand side of your screen for you to click subscribe. Have a wonderful day.